Amen. You know what that stuff is when you go to H-E-B or Walmart or one of those places, you go over to the vegetable department and you see all these things. You see all these things on the shelves. You know what that's called? It's called produce. Produce. Amen. That is things that that uh, plants have uh, brought forth. Amen. That's produce. I want to be productive for the Lord. Yeah. You know? Praise God. I don't want to just have Christianity just for me. I want it for me, but I want to have it <coughs> so I can have produce productive for the Lord. Amen. Bear fruit. It's called fruit. And uh, Jesus talked a lot about fruit. Amen. He said, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Amen. Jesus was fruitful, wasn't he? Huh? He went about doing good to all that were oppressed of the devil. Amen. That's what we should be doing. Amen. Going about uh, you know, helping, doing something. Our lives should be adding something to somebody else's life. Amen. Praise God to help them in some way, some form. And praise God. But it says here, but he that lacketh these things, the things we just mentioned, is blind. That's what happens before we come to the Lord. The Lord's got to remove the blindness from our minds, doesn't he? From our hearts. So it's telling us here, it's not a matter of just starting out, right? We've got to be careful because we can have our sight glossed back over, you might say, spiritually speaking. Praise God. The reason why this church is not filled this morning, uh, part of it is because people are sick. <laughs> a lot of crud going on. But there's a lot of people that's out there on the street doing other things because, and they've been witness to about Jesus and they don't come. And the reason why is because they don't see what you see. They don't see it. Amen. You know, you can witness some people and they'll just tell you, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that's necessary. I don't believe, you know, I don't believe that Jesus is the only way. I don't believe that, that living that holy life is necessary. I don't believe that you have to do the things that the Bible says, you know. I don't, basically what they're saying is I don't see what you're seeing. Amen. And the reason why is because people's minds are blinded. The Bible says that. You can talk to people about the oneness of God. You know? Explain to them that, you know, the, you can take the scriptures and you can go through the one God scriptures that there's one God and he was manifest in the flesh and that's who Jesus was. Right. <clears throat> and, and people just come to a place sometimes where they, I don't see that. I, just, I can't see it. I you know, I know, I, I know you're reading it in the scripture, but I just basically are saying I can't understand that. And the reason why it can't, they can't see it <clears throat> unless the Spirit causes them and helps them to understand. It's like Peter, whenever Jesus asked, who do men say that I the Son of Man am? And uh, Peter said, you know, they say you're one of the prophets. You know, he listed some of them. Uh, but and Jesus said, but Peter, who do you say that I am? And he said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus said this, says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed, revealed, revealed. In other words, you didn't get this from the natural man, the natural thinking. And see, most of, most of mankind, including us before we came to the Lord, we have a natural mind. Amen. We think a certain way, a fleshly way. And he said, flesh and, Jesus told Peter, said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to thee. You didn't get this by the natural man, but, but by my Father which is in heaven. In other words, the Spirit revealed unto Peter, gave the revelation, amen, of who Jesus was. And Peter saw it. Peter saw it. And, uh, but, <clears throat> you know, the, uh, others could not. And sometimes, uh, you know, for people to be able to see, uh, it was like whenever, what was it, Philip in John chapter 14. Uh, you know, Jesus, 
said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And, uh, and, and Philip said, show us the Father, and it'll satisfy us. And Jesus said, have I been so long time with you, Philip, and yet hast thou not known me? He that seeth me has seen the Father. Is that what he said? Yeah. That's what he said, right? But Philip was at that place, you know? Show us. And, and Jesus did show him. Amen. So I remember my pastor uh, that I got in church under. Pastor, he was always my pastor. I always loved my pastor. He's gone on to be with the Lord, but I remember him telling me, he said that he received the Holy Ghost miraculously. I mean, it, it was a, just really a, I can't remember all the details to it, but he spoke in tongues and couldn't speak English for a long time, from what I remember him telling me. <coughs> and uh, he had the Holy Ghost. He it transformed his life. He said, but I could not understand the oneness of God for for two years. Here it was. I had the Holy Ghost, but I just could not see how Jesus was God. You know? Uh, and But I knew it was the Scripture. I knew the Scripture said but I couldn't see it. And then he said, one day... He said, I think he said he was down by a railroad track or something, doing something. And he said, and then all of a sudden it just boom. It just got, I just, I saw it. I saw what, you know, understood what they were saying uh, about Jesus being God and that doesn't flesh. So it comes by revelation. The things of God come by revelation. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And all along the way, we will, as we're walking with the Lord, we will uh, come to revelations. Amen. Praise God. Everything that it, people think is a revelation is not always a revelation. It's got to line up with the Word of God. Amen. Or it's not a revelation. <clears throat> Amen. So, it, the, Peter's saying here, he, he that lacketh these things that we mentioned but, uh, in these previous scriptures, he says, he's blind. He's blind and cannot see afar off. What would he need to see afar off? Well, it kind of goes on and explains itself. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Amen. Sometimes people, you know, you want to forget uh, the condemnation, the things that bring condemnation to you from your past. But at the same time, it's good to remember where he brought you from. Uh, don't forget, you know, you, you didn't get into this because of any good thing that you have done. Amen. We're in something right here now that the Lord has allowed us to be a part of. He's cleansed us from our old sin. We don't deserve to be here. He's allowed us to be saved. Amen? <coughs> we need to remember that. Praise God. Amen. So it, he went on to say, he said, give diligence, verse 10, Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Can you see that light coming on right there, Brother Jeremiah, this first one? Maybe that's what seems so dark in here to me. I think it's messing with my channel. Oh, is it? Okay, that's all right. That's all right. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody say, make your calling and election sure. Now, I believe that we're living at the coming of the Lord. I believe that. I don't, you know, I don't believe it's very far off. You may not agree with me on that, but <coughs> I am convinced after reading the scriptures, and I don't profess to know everything. I don't profess to be a prophecy preacher, but I believe that we are living near the second coming of Jesus. So very, very close. I believe mean, if you really get into the Word of God and, you know, look at the things that's transpiring in our world and have been transpiring for a, a number of years now, you know, I'm looking uh, for uh, the coming of Jesus. Amen? And one of the great things that Jesus uh, spoke of prior to his coming, he said, uh, we read this last week, he said, take heed that you be not deceived. He talked about a lot of deception. So if this is near the coming of the Lord, 
then we ought to be cautious. Amen? If we are living in that time, and I believe we are. And I, I look and I, on things, sometimes on the computer and stuff like that, and uh, I see a lot of people talking about God. You know? I click on a lot of them. Listen, kind of listen a little bit to what they what they're saying, just out of curiosity and uh, and checking where people are. And uh, I do realize a lot of people can be at different places in their walk with God. You know, again, just like we talked about in Peter, you know, believing the gospel and being born again is just the beginning. And there's growth after that. So that means... To me, it tells me that people can uh, not necessarily be where people that's been in this for 50 years are, you know, when they first come. <clears throat> and uh, it, they're like, well, one place, Paul in 1 Corinthians called the Corinthians that were fussing with one another, he called them babes in Christ. Right. You're like babes in Christ. You're still carnal and walking like men, you know. And uh, there was in the Hebrews, he told them uh, that they needed to be reminded what were the first principles of the oracle of Christ. In other words, what are the first teachings about Jesus? They needed to be go back to first base, as it were, you know. And they, Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, said, "You ought to be teaching other people, but now." You've done, got off base, basically. That's not a quote. But it, but you got off base. You need to go back to the beginning and remember, you know, what the what the real, true doctrines and teachings of the of the faith of Jesus are. And I, I find looking at all these things and listening to the different ones, and a lot of them I run across because I am concerned about the stuff that's going on with this virus and the vaccines and all that stuff. And so... Being a pastor, I care what this flock, you know, uh, I don't want them to fall prey to something. And so I do a lot of digging. I try to fill out and search out the truth of things. And, and I have found out that there's a lot of people, you know, they stand for quite a number of good things, but a lot of their... Christianity, so-called, is distorted. It's got a lot of additives or a lot of things that are not true. And, and again, you know, again, some of them say some wonderful things and stand for some wonderful things. A lot of them stand against abortion. I'm all for that. Thank God there's people that's speaking out against abortion. You know, I... I I give my hands up there with that, you know. Uh, praise God. They don't like abortion. A lot of them speaking out against child trafficking or, or human trafficking, period. It, all of it's bad, you know. Thank God there's people speaking out against that kind of stuff. Amen. But at the same time, and, you know, it, it really... It kind of, you know, it's disturbing. I, I try to consider that people may be at a certain level. You might say, you know, in fact, some of them are not even uh, have experienced, not have, have not even experienced a new birth. You know, probably a lot of them. And maybe why. And the reason why they have it is because there's people telling you, telling them that they don't have to have that, they don't, that's not necessary, or there's other doctrines that's been presented to them. A lot of them may be wonderful people, you know, uh, have things that they stand for that are good things. And again, I applaud them for any good thing they stand for. But at the same time, it's important that they come to the knowledge of the truth of what the faith of Jesus really consists of. Amen? Praise God. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> those of us that 
uh, have uh, the Lord has brought us into the truth, though we don't have everything we need. We are, we should be growing. We're, we're complete in Jesus. But what I'm trying to say is he's working on us too. I hope that he's still working on each and every one of us. He's working on me. You know, I've still got room to improve. Amen. I'm trying to. I hope you are too. All of us should be doing that. <clears throat> praise God. But, uh, praise God. We, uh, I, at the same time, I see uh, people stand for many of these good, positive things that are uh, are actually biblical things, you know. I, I, and I applaud them for that. At the same time, in the same sentence nearly, a lot of times I hear cursing. I hear things that are just completely not Christian. And that, that concerns me. And I see a lot of Christian people that do have truth in their lives that concerns me. You know, when Jesus said, beware of false prophets, he was talking to his people to beware of false prophets. You know, he wasn't talking to people of the world. He was talking to his people. And he was telling them, beware. If you saw a beware sign, uh, if you saw a beware sign on somebody's yard you was fixing uh, to enter into, especially if it had a Doberman picture <laughs> on the picture, <laughs> I would hope you'd be smart enough not to go in that backyard. Right? Yeah. That is a warning not to go there. Yeah. And Jesus, when he said beware of false prophets, he's saying don't go there. Do not enter in there. Be careful, believers. Be careful, believers. Amen. He said, give diligence, Peter did. Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Your election is you're, you've been chosen. Amen. You're one of the elect of God. If you're born again of the water spirit, you are one of God's elect. That's what they're called, the elect. They're called the elect. It means chosen. Another place in Peter's writings, in fact, I didn't pick it out, but uh, he said to the Christian, he said, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, you know, uh, that you should show forth the praise of the him that has brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know what his marvelous light is? His marvelous truth. You've been brought into his marvelous truth. And so he's telling us here, he's telling the Christians here, he's saying, give diligence. What does that mean? Rebecca, I know she cleans her house good. She's diligent about it. You know, she is. Praise God. Amen. She's a good little housekeeper. I think she is. I'm not in her house 24-7s, but every time I've ever been over there, it's real good and clean and tidy and all that kind of stuff. She's diligent about things are in their place and stuff. And, uh, and then, you know, now I know the kids are playing. When you got kids, you're going to have toys scattered and stuff like that. But she's diligent about things and she pays attention to it, right? Amen. When people are diligent about things, they pay attention to things. They, they, are, they, are, they are conscious about about things, you know, things they're involved in. And we're involved in something very important. We're involved in, in, a, in a gospel, the only gospel that will save a soul. And as Jesus said to beware of, we got to pay, pay diligence that outside influences don't influence us away from this place of truth that God has put us into. Yeah. Amen. 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 You got to make your calling and your election sure. It means make sure you stay in the truth. You got to be careful. A lot of people are carrying something that they're not actually living. Amen. Amen. I, I thought about David over here. Let's turn to Second Samuel. Uh, chapter 6, verse 2. Now, to give you an idea of what happened 
Eli was a priest in the Old Testament in the time of the judges. He was slothful. He ended <coughs> up getting in trouble with God. God spoke a prophecy of judgment to him that his sons were going to die because they were very vile and evil. And he didn't he didn't take care of, of the matters. He just, you know, just didn't didn't do what he needed to do. <clears throat> they were doing some very immoral things with the women uh, that were coming to the to the house of God. And uh, anyway, they ended up being in a battle and slain. Eli was also slain by, well, actually, he, he fell backwards and broke his neck. And the, one of the worst things about it all is that the ark of God, the ark of God was the piece of furniture that they put into the tabernacle in the holiest of all, which represented where the presence of God was. And they brought the ark of God because they were losing the battle that they were fighting. They brought the ark of God, believing that God would, would be there with them and conquer the enemies. But on the other hand, what took place is that they got defeated and the ark got carried into the enemy land. Well, the enemy took it and put it on a cart uh, to be pulled by oxen. They put it up the the ark of God on a cart and God was punishing them God was afflicting them because they had the presence of God you might say they had the ark of God God was uh, started judging them uh, they started having what was called emeralds probably tumors and stuff throughout their land and affecting many of the people and so they finally wanted to get rid of the ark of God they wanted to send it back to God's people. And so they put it on a new cart pulled by some oxen. And the cart went to the land of Israel. The people of Israel got the cart. And uh, they, some of them opened, uh, touched the ark, opened it, and looked in and got killed. Thousands of people got killed because of that. Because nobody was supposed to touch it. It wasn't supposed to be touched. They opened it. Lack of reverence, you know. So anyway, they took it to a house uh, where it was uh, was for some time. And uh, eventually David wanted to bring the ark of God home. And so that's where we're reading from. He wanted to bring it there because it represented the presence of God. Amen. It says in verse 2, And David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Baal of Judah, Bailey of Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. There was cherubims on that ark. And it was said that God dwelt between the cherubims on the mercy seat there. You know? And it, so they went to get it. David arose with the people uh, with him to go get it, to bring it back. And listen to what they did in verse number three. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. Now, I've got to help you to understand this, that the ark of God was never designed by God. The instructions never were given to carry it on a cart. The priests, the Levites, were to carry the ark. They had staves that they stuck through it, and they carried the ark the priests were to carry the presence of God, you might say. Carry that ark. Okay? But it was the enemy, the Philistines, the enemy, and the others, that put the ark on a cart, a new cart. And here David goes to fetch it. Yes, it came home on a new cart, but the enemy is the one that designed that carrying the ark. It wasn't the original the way God had originally planned for it to be carried. And so David, when he goes to get it, they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab uh, that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, dragged the new cart. And they brought it out 
of the house of Abinadab, which was at Gibeah, <clears throat> accompanying the ark of God, and Ahio <laughs> went before the ark, and David and all the house of Israel played before the the Lord all manner of instruments <clears throat> made of fir wood, even of, on harps and on psalteries and timbrels and, and on carnets and on cymbals. <clears throat> and when they came to uh, Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it for the oxen shook, shook it. Now you got to understand, this all looks good, doesn't it? It looks all like, man, they're really excited about getting the presence of God. I mean, they are, they are singing and rejoicing and praising God. All of this looks really good, right? It's a good thing to want the presence of God, right? But the problem is, is that they're carrying it the way the world brought it to them. They're carrying it in an unbiblical manner. It matters how you carry the presence of God. Amen. You understand? I'm telling you, there's a lot of people trying to carry the presence of God in an unbiblical matter, manner. It's important for us that we have the presence of God. Yes, it's important for us to be born again. But it is also important for us how we carry his presence. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> and you know what? When we got the Holy Ghost, we got the presence of God in our lives. Yeah. Right, come on. We got the presence of God in our lives. They were singing. They were worshiping. They were praising. But whenever they came to Nacon's threshing floor, uh, Uzzah put forth his hand. Good intentions doesn't make it right. Yeah. He put forth his hand because they... Uh, the oxen shook the ark. He was afraid of it falling. He had a good reason why he did what he did. But you know what? It, it, it is not good enough to, to, to break the word of God in order to just to have a good intention. Amen? You know what happened to him? The next verse says, And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Para Uzzah to this day. Verse 9 says, And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall, I, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? It put the fear of God in David. Amen? All of this seems so wonderful. You know, you know, you wouldn't think that, you know, everything was just rosy. I mean, we're doing, we're praising God. Well, it's good to praise God, but it's even more important to carry his presence. Amen. As he has called us to carry it. Amen. We need to praise God. We need to worship God. All of that's good and all of that's proper. Amen. <coughs> praise God. But God had a, uh, a way that the ark was to be carried. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You got to remember, throughout time, men have tried to worship God in their own way. It started off right from the very, very beginning when Cain offered the fruit of the ground. And he it might have had he might have had good intentions. You know? It, in fact, he God did say, hey, I won't accept that, but I'll, if you will do it like your brother did it, bring the right offering, bring the right thing, you know, you'll be accepted, didn't he? But instead of doing the right thing, doing it the right way, amen, worshiping God the right way, he got, he got stubborn. He got, you know, stiff-necked. He got rebellious. Amen. And ended up being a, coming a vagabond, a castaway. Amen. If he'd have just humbled himself and worshiped God the correct way, it wasn't that God loved him more than he loved Abel. It was that he was doing it the wrong way. Amen. Praise God. And these people were doing it the wrong way. Amen. 
A lot of good things could be pointed out about the what they did. They worshiped, you know, harps and psalteries, timbrels, instruments made of firewood, cornets, amen, all that kind of stuff. It was very, it was even a new cart. Amen. But the cart, the ideal of the cart did not come from the word of God. It came from heathens. They were trying to carry the ark of God the way the world carried it. That got them in trouble. Amen. It terrified David after what happened. Amen. Can you imagine the, how startled he was? That here we are, we're doing all of this, and yet God is not pleased with it. Amen. Praise God. So later on, after a great number of time, a great long time, David decided to give it another shot. And he wanted to, to bring the ark. He wanted the presence of God. It's good to want the presence of God. We ought to all want the presence of God. But we've got to also remember that we need to do this right. Right? Yeah. We don't distort the gospel of Jesus. Amen. There's people that tell you, living godly, living holy, you know, that ain't no big issue anymore. Just do it however you want to do it. Just profess Jesus. Let me tell you something. There's more to it than just that. Amen. We need to do this right. Amen. So if you look at 1 Chronicles, you'll see where David uh, is uh, about to bring the ark again. Uh, time number two of trying to bring it. Amen. To the place that he had for it. Amen. In 1 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 1. And David made him houses in the city of David and prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched for it a tent. Then David said, listen to me, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Uh, not a cart, right? The Levites. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Amen. Verse 3. And David gathered all Israel together to Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord unto his place which he had prepared for it. Amen. And I'm going to just cut through several verses of scripture for time's sake. Down to verse number 13. He talks about why tragedy happened the first time. He said, for because you did not at the first, uh, the Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. The reason why that Uzzah was smitten is because they did not seek God to carry the, the ark of God after the due order. That's what brought trouble to them. They did a lot of good things. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of good things. But listen to me. I'm just trying to cause us to understand. It is so very important for us that we really examine the Word of God. That we really look into the Word of God. And that we really follow it as it has been laid out by Scripture. Amen? Amen. Come on, we need to believe in Jesus. Yes, we all need to believe in Jesus. But it's not enough just to do a lot of good things. We need to get back to the book. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah. Do things after the due order. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There's a lot of people, you know, that they'll tell you that baptism is not even important. Amen. In fact, it was, I was told that at the, at the first, before I got into the, truth, the church that preached the actual truth of the Word of God, <clears throat> they told me that baptism... Uh, was not for the remission of sins. They just said it was for the confession of your faith. It was a good thing if you wanted to do it. If you didn't want to do it, it didn't, it didn't matter. It wasn't a salvation issue. That's what they, I was told, basically. That may not be a quote, but that's what they were telling me. Yeah. Amen. I didn't, I didn't know till later on, you know, that it was necessary. You know, if Jesus said it was necessary, it's necessary. He said, you can't even enter the kingdom of God except a man born of water spirit. That water part is baptism in Jesus' name. 
The spirit part is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I had people telling me that you didn't need the Holy Ghost. You can't get that these days. Amen. I even had people tell me it was only for the apostles, and even the Bible bears out that there was about 120 in the upper room that received it. And then just read on through the book of Acts. It, this is for everybody. Amen. And I do believe Jesus is a personal Savior. Amen. But that's, that is a very shallow, shallow thing to tell people when they want to be saved. He is a personal Savior. You know, they say, receive Jesus as your personal Savior, and you're saved. Amen. I hear preachers ending their messages a lot of times. Amen. Saying those very things. Except now, except Jesus now is your personal Savior. Okay, you did it. You're saved. I've heard it a lot of times. Listen to me. He is a personal Savior. We do receive Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. But it, it, that involves more than what they are telling them. Amen. That involves more than what people are being told. And because of that, it's causing a lot of people to stumble and not have. That's what I'm talking about today. Give diligence. Make your calling and election sure. That's what we need to do. Amen. Praise God. We need to seek him after the due order. We need to carry the presence of God. Not the way the world is. But the way they carried the presence of God in the scriptures. Amen. I want you to know something. The early church was not a, a worldly church. The early church was not a carnal church. The early church was a spiritual house. Amen. And it was a people that believed in living godly and living holy. Amen. And there's a lot of voices in our world today that's talking about Jesus. But there's that element of godly living seems to be distorted in their lives. Amen. Again, I give room. Some people may just simply be, you know, at a certain place. I hope, I hope, I hope for their sake. Amen. But as long as they're listening to voices, you know, that keeps them back away from the truth. As long as they're listening to people that are preaching and teaching things that are not bringing them into the fullness of God's truth. They will stay where they're at. Amen. But I pray, oh God, Lord, I want to provoke you to good works. I want to, I want to say something that's going to, that's going to thrust you on into the word of God. Amen. Amen. To cause you to, to dig into the word of God and know beyond a shadow of doubt, I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way, that song says. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I talked to you last week about there's one gospel. Remember that? We talked about there's one gospel. I'm still talking about that. There's one gospel. Amen. <coughs> Amen. I didn't get it too far this morning. Amen. My time is about up. But I want you to know something. You know, I want you to, like the scripture says, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. I want to say something right quick. You know, when I built, when I, we added onto my house. We added a duplex onto my house for my mother-in-law and for my mother. And, uh, you know, I put, I put new stuff in it. In fact, the whole add-on is new, new stuff. And uh, I didn't put none of the plumbing in the slab. Well, just right where it stems up, off, where it slabs comes into the wall, and then it goes up. All my plumbing goes up and goes overhead, and I'm thinking, ha, ah, I'm smart, you know, to do that. And <laughs> I, uh, I'm thinking, I got foam insulation. In, the, in, in it and it goes up all the way to the peak in my house and all it's it's like living in a cooler you know 
know, it's got that foam insulation and all. And so I took that, that plumbing coming out of the slab uh, copper, but from that copper piece where it just come out of the slab there, that one spot, up through the walls, I wanted to go with PEX. And I think PEX is a good thing. Because you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, you know what? That PEX, if it freezes, you know, it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to bust because you know, there's a little bit of give there. <coughs> and besides that, I got it in that foam, and I didn't, it didn't get that cold here, Texas. It got pretty cold last year. But, and it gets pretty cold, you know, sometimes. But it, in, in that insulation, it should be good because I'm going to have the inside of it heated up. Emily's listening to my story. <laughs> but I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I want to go with PEX in, <coughs> in my house. And I, man, I just did all that PEX and stuff, and I'm just sure everything's all right. And it never crossed my mind that a rat would get in my house and bite a hole in that PEX. But he did it, <laughs> and he's been doing it. I gotta catch him and kill him or do something to get rid of that rat. <clears throat> he kind of, somehow got up in my attic and now I've had water leaks and I had spots messing up on my ceiling because the water's overhead and it's leaving big old bulges and stuff at the time we found it. And you know, I, and you know what? Whenever I was originally doing this, if I had known that, I would have put copper in everything. Because, but you know what it is? I was only looking in one place. I was looking at freezing. And it, then I was so focused on having it where I, my water wouldn't be freezing up and all that stuff. And I never stopped to think that there may be other areas I might need to be concerned with. You know? I don't have a lot of rats. But uh, I've got one that's gotten in there from the attic some way. And I never thought beyond, you know, I only thought in the arena of the freeze. And it never crossed my mind to think about a rat getting up there. And that rat has so far, he's bitten four holes in pecs in different places. I fixed one and he got another one. Fixed one and he got another one. I got to catch that thing. Got to get rid of that rat. But you know what I'm saying is, there's a lot of people got their Christianity and they got one thing down right. But you know what? You might need to check other areas. Yeah. You might consider there might be some other things that God is wanting to change in our lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to get to heaven's gate, you know, and, and find out uh, oh, I did need to correct this in my life. I was paying attention to this other stuff. <laughs> you know, living for God is like, it's kind of like a, a, a wheel with a lot of spokes. There's a lot of spokes. There's not an area of our lives that God does not want to perfect. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's not just one spoke. Some people think it's just the way you dress. <laughs> You dress right, you're a Christian. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of spokes in the wheel. And you know what? We need to broaden our horizons. We need to look. We need to be doctrinally sound. We need to be spiritually sound. We need to have the love of God inside of us. We need to be forgiven. Yeah, we need to dress right and dress. A man needs to dress like a man and a woman needs to dress like a woman. All of those things are important. <coughs> Amen. Praise God. We need to let God work in our lives. And again, listen to me. The new birth is the beginning. But we need to grow. And we need to listen to God. And we need to read His Word. Amen? we got to remember who we're dealing with. We're dealing with a holy God. Amen? Amen. And we want to carry His presence right. Amen? David thought all of that singing, all that wonderful singing, all that stuff was just good. But they weren't carrying the presence of God right. And it got them in trouble. But you know what? They corrected it. And David ended up with the Ark of God. Amen. If you need to get a drink, get you a drink. We're going to change the order of service. God bless you.